It's often the case that when people buy their first electric car, they soon consider solar panels for free fuel and a home battery to store it in for later use. My guest today has built his eco dream house with all that sustainable tech, loves driving his Tesla in the sunshine as much as I do, and is absolutely killing it as a Tesla content creator. Yep, I'm a bit jealous. Please welcome Ryan Cowan to the show. Hello. Hey, Will. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me on. For those people who don't know you, who are you? I'm an Aussie Tesla content creator. It's probably the quickest way to describe myself. But yeah, just trying to educate the general public across social platforms on what it's like to drive a Tesla. And now in this new chapter, which we're about to talk about, what it's like to live with a power wall on the side of your house and a heap of solar. Yeah, cool. So you've got a Tesla, you've got a power wall, solar, Starlink. You are literally living my dream. So I hope it's as nice <laughs> as I imagine it to be. But you know, what inspired you to build um, your Ecoro home then? Where did that all begin? Yeah, wow. Um, first of all, I will say it feels like a dream as well for me right now, because these products all seemed, you know, I take myself back to just before lockdown when I was working at the Apple store and people would come in and I'd see the Tesla app on their phone. And it was like, wow, like to have one of those cars would be a dream from an environmental point of view and a tech point of view. That were the two sort of highlights why I really resonated with the brand. And then lockdown happened and I started making content and I decided to, yeah, just make the leap and, and sell the house and move to the country and buy a Tesla and buy Tesla shares. Like it was just this whole journey. And I cannot believe that we've ended up here where we are now, where we've got our own home that is um, super sustainable and efficient and that there's a Model Y parked in the driveway next to the Powerwall 3. So it's definitely like a pinch myself type of moment. We have obviously had to compromise on things like moving way out of the city and being in you know, a regional location to be able to afford this and doing a lot of work with my own YouTube channel and partnering with brands and stuff. So some of the things that you'll see on my content, I haven't necessarily purchased. Uh, I've done them through brand deals. So yeah, it's a really awesome position to be in. I'm very grateful for it. Coming back to your question about how did we get to this house and this kind of idea of an eco home, I guess through YouTube and just seeing other, you know, tiny houses and um, really energy efficient homes has brought us to this point. And I think what I would say is like, it's, it's not that hard to do. You just need to plan for it. Like, it's not like it's heaps more expensive or anything. This was a basically a budget build. And it's turned out that it's just a really environmentally friendly, efficient home. You mentioned about the uh, tiny houses. I love watching those things. They're all from Australia for some reason, the ones that I watch. <laughs> but I love them. Yeah. Just the fact that you can just have be totally energy independent. So um, how's that worked for you then? Are you technically off grid? I mean, are you able to survive a zombie apocalypse if it was to happen? That's the main well, question. It's been pretty interesting because since we moved in in December, right before Christmas, we've really not needed the grid once here in Australia during like summertime, basically. I expected that, you know, sort of most nights we would drain our power wall or at least by the next morning. That has not been happening. We've been waking up most mornings with still 50% battery. Oh. That is not what I expected. So that's been a really nice surprise. We have been completely independent from the grid. That will change come winter time, um, but certainly in these sunnier type of months, it's been phenomenal. So you've just got the one power wall, right? Just one, yeah, one power wall three. And I think I have lived in a property that had a power wall too, and that would pull from the grid more than this situation. I think mm. there's two reasons why we're seeing a difference in our new home. One is that we've got a very energy efficient home. So all the new appliances, the hot water heat pump, all of these things mean that we're actually not using as much power as an older style home. So mm. big tick there. But the second thing that is a really big difference between Powerwall 2 and 3 is the double output into the house. So Powerwall 2 is kind of capped at five kilowatts into the home at once. And it's quite easy to like put the oven on, put the induction cooktop on, do a few things and you've exceeded that output. Whereas with Powerwall 3, depending where you are in the world, that sits at about 10 kilowatts into the house. And it's really hard to go over 10 kilowatts in an energy efficient home. Mm. Um, I've actually done a video on it. Like I literally tried to drain the Powerwall as fast as I could. And the only way to kind of exceed that maximum output was to put the car on charge. So wow. basically just the house as it is, is, is very hard to exceed 
that 10 kilowatts. Now you've experienced it. How do you think this is going to be sort of adopted by the, the general public over time? Do you think this is this is just the no brainer that it is, but it's just the financial aspects of getting over that? initial uh yeah 100 i can only speak from someone that never had this type of system no solar no battery no ev to now you know in the space of a few years going into this house it makes so much sense to be generating and using your own power it makes even more sense to have an ev in your carport as well like if you've got solar and a battery in an ev it's such a great solution I can see that all new homes will eventually, well, hopefully soon. Like, you know, I'd like to think in the next five to 10 years, this is really commonplace. It's just less reliance on the grid. It's so seamless, it, it's so logical, and it is a really incredible feeling to just be mm. self-sufficient like this. Is it like Tesla in a, in a couple of ways? When you get a Tesla, you just want to tell everyone like how amazing it is. Uh, but you know, it, it, do you get the same sort of skepticism about sustainable energy for homes as we do from family and friends who don't have EVs? Are you feeling like you're banging your head against a brick wall sometimes trying to show people how amazing this could all be? Definitely with the battery. I think solar is very popular in Australia. So a lot of homes have solar. That's really commonplace. But having a battery gets a lot of, you know, pushback because people think the return on investment is so poor and they don't understand some of the benefits. Powerwall is kind of changing the game. That's a very popular product here in Australia. Probably to answer it simply, like the Tesla battery right now in this current sort of climate that we're in can get a little bit more backlash, what I'm noticing online at least, versus like another brand. But I think all in all, uh, from all the research I've done, for me, it was a no brainer to go with Powerwall. Like I looked at other options for a cost reason, but geez, it's such a compelling product. And some people are scared of the ecosystem. I love it. Like, give me the ecosystem. I want everything to talk to each other. I want it to all be in one app. And living with that system, I'm so glad that I went for a Tesla battery to fit with our Model Y and even like small things like the, the wall charger. It all connects up. It's beautiful. And I think that's only going to get better with software updates. The same like the cars, you know, it's like software updates to the power wall, to the right. wall connector, to the car you know, features like charge on solar, that was a software update and it just works perfectly through the whole system. And I just mm. don't think you can beat that. I haven't really thought about that before over the software updates for your power wall. So what sort of things change there then? Well, Stormwatch is a great example. Like that, mm. have you heard of Stormwatch? Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, but please yeah. explain it. So yeah, that's just a, a software update that checks your local weather all the time. And if there is a storm coming, that's gonna, you know, potentially threaten grid power, it's going to make sure that your power wall is charged up and that in the event of the grid going down, you can run during a storm. Like that that's just the perfect example of a software defined product like the cars. The the team that's behind the the software is just so brilliant. The rollout of these type of features, I feel, is only going to get better. Mm -hmm. There's so much that you can do with these sort of home energy products. I think this is a, a, a quite an exciting space. Is it also running on auto bidder as well? Then do you feed into the grid, you know, like the sort of mega packs do? Is that is that anything to do with with power walls? Again, it depends country by country. But essentially, um, right now I'm on the Tesla Energy Plan, which is like a local Australian offering. Um, they do have Tesla Energy in the US and, and maybe in the UK, I'm not sure. It kind of buys and sells um, depending on certain factors. From what I can gather, the Australian version is, is not like the US version quite yet. There's definitely some cool things that are automated within that app. But going back to your house then, ha has it sort of lived up to expectations and was it worth the investment? Yeah, was there anything, anything negative or anything we should have done differently or uh, anything like that you can share? I wish more people would build this way, which is really a, a simple building philosophy of considering the sun. So this is a long, skinny, rectangular house. Every room basically has north facing <laughs> in our section of the world. North facing is just, you know, where the sun's coming in. It's great for winter because you can let the sun in and in summer you can block it. It's a really simple philosophy, but it just makes such a difference to the way that your house performs in throughout the year. It doesn't cost any extra to, to sort of think this way. There's a lot of properties around us where we're living that um, 
that are just kind of opposite thinking. No north windows, a lot of west and east windows. That has been the most rewarding thing is how the sun is sort of working with the house. Negatives are we started on a really tight budget and classic building story in the last month that blew out by about 20, 25%. That was frustrating for us because it feels like we still got the same house. Like we didn't decide to put a marble bench top in or anything. So yeah, there's been some regrets that are associated with the cost, but certainly the decisions we've made for the house, we feel really good about the floor plan and the, you know, the energy appliances that we've put in. We're really grateful and really positive about um, this place that we're living in. Well, I'll link to the uh, the video of the tour of your house, which uh, yeah, me, me and my wife watched a little while ago. I thought it was amazing. Uh, but yeah, we love we're into houses anyway. We always watching grand designs and stuff. So, <laughs> but it's lovely to see what you've done. And uh, then the uh, B roll footage that I've probably been playing over this video is taken from that clip. <laughs> so right. just thinking ahead here as I'm recording. Can you explain how your car and your power wall and your solar all sort of communicate with one another? Then there is a feature called Charge on Solar, which basically takes any excess solar to charge your car for you know free essentially that's a yeah. really awesome thing to have and part of the, having the tesla ecosystem this really interesting kind of thought that when you've got this model y sitting in your driveway that's like it's essentially you know eight or nine power walls uh mm. sitting there and you can't utilize it in the way that you can with a power wall so i think that's going to be interesting to see what happens as other brands starting to offer vehicle to grid vehicle to home Essentially, when you have a power outage, you might want to tap into your Model Y's battery. You know, it's it's huge. It's you know, 60 kilowatts or something, I think our one is. Yeah, I think um, watch this space. I don't actually know anything. I'm just interested oh, to right. see how, oh, yeah. how, how Tesla tackle this because... I I thought yeah. you were about to blow my mind and tell me there's there's some secret thing that you can get from your from your car's battery to the power wall because that, that's what we've all been waiting for. It's like all the other electric car companies are offering vehicle to load. It's just Tesla have got this <laughs> be in their bonnet about <laughs> not wanting yeah. to do that, and uh, just in case people, I guess you know, use it to power their house, and then it, it interferes with things like battery warranty and all sorts, doesn't it? That if people were to use it like that or sell it back to the grid. You know, and, mm. and I sort of, I sort of get the conundrum that they're in, but yeah. I think Tesla will be pushed eventually uh, uh, to have to keep up with the competitors in that, in, <laughs> which is yeah. a weird thing to say, isn't it? I think it's top of mind for them. You look at what they've done with Cybertruck and PowerShare, which is essentially mm. a really well executed version of that, and no other brand is able to offer that level of execution. And I think it's like reminds me of Apple a little bit, where you know they kind of wait to later on to just bring out the better executed version of a vehicle to home or vehicle to grid. They are the biggest player by far. So I think when it comes to this dream setup of power or solar, you know, you've got your Tesla in the driveway. It's just the next unlock, like huge value add. Um, yeah. I believe that people will still need a power wall, just like power share normally works. You'll still need the full ecosystem, but it'll just talk to the car in a way that we're yet to see yet. But I'm very excited for updates on that. There's one more thing that your house has got in the Tesla ecosystem, though, and that's uh, Dishy Mook flat face. It looks beautiful perched upon the top of your roof there. So what are the pros and cons of, of having Starlink then? Oh, Starlink is so popular in Australia. We have like just a really poor alternative option here in regional Victoria where we are. So yeah. it's night and day. It, it was just a no brainer. Um, you cannot get speeds like Starlink offer in a regional location here. So it's been awesome. The The Starlink app is like almost just as impressive as the Tesla app. Obviously that's what I'm running off now. That's the only thing really on our roof is, is Starlink. We don't have like a TV aerial or anything. It's just this, you know, this Starlink, which as you mentioned, I decided to put that right at the front of the house. Yeah. Um, yeah, quite oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, show that off. Yeah. 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 So no, no it, Starlink. Do you, have, awesome. do you have lots of neighbors that have, have it as well then? Yeah. It's very popular. Yeah, okay. Dear audience, are you considering getting an EV for the first time? Solar batteries, a Starlink even for your home? And if not, why not?
get involved in the comments below. And I'm sure if you have any questions for Ryan, he might well drop in to answer them as well. But one more thing, we're going to carry on this conversation on my Patreon page, where I've got lots of fun uh, questions and ramblings to talk to Ryan about. So join us at patreon.com forward slash Tesla Jigsaw. And do check out Ryan's Model Y on YouTube. He's got a ton of great videos waiting for you. Um, I'll pop some links below to some of them. And if you want to see our discussion on Tesla addiction, Ryan's Model Y, Australian Tesla perception and the future, click this video next. I think you'll like it. I'm Will. This is the Tesla Jigsaw. Thank you, patrons. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.